oh, wait, it's like Groundhog Day. It's every day. It's Aaron Rodgers Day because the hijacking of the draft has continued for now the seventh day. And a couple of items emerged today, Shereen. Let's start with Bob McGinn of The Athletic when he's not talking to anonymous scouts to harvest negative information about draft picks. He's getting some good information about the things Aaron Rodgers may or may not be doing. And according to McGinn, Rodgers has mocked general manager Brian Gutekunst, or as Favre called him on his podcast, Gutenhurst, which I actually like better. He has mocked Gutekunst and called him Jerry Krause, which I would assume in the general manager industry is the equivalent of being called something that can't be repeated in any setting, even satellite or cable. So uh, we have that new development as we learn more about the extent to which Aaron Rodgers really doesn't like Brian Gutekunst. Uh, he really, really doesn't like Brian Gutekunst. He doesn't like you, Mike. He doesn't like his family. He doesn't seem to like anyone. <laughs> but he, he really, like anyone. really. He doesn't but like I think you. Brian Gutekunst. You just made the list. Uh, I did. And, and Brett Favre's <laughs> been on the list and somehow has managed to get his way off the list. And I don't know how he quite does that. But Brian Gutekunst is probably first on that list right now, Mike, based on uh, what we what we read and heard today. It really is amazing how this stuff just keeps cascading. It keeps coming out. And I don't know where the leaks are coming from now. Originally, I think everything was coming from Rodgers or his camp. Now, yeah. it could be selective leaks made by the team, made by people with the organization who aren't happy with this, or just teammates who have had enough of it. But it may not be Rodgers now, and I don't know that it helps Rodgers to leak that he mocks Gutekunst and calls him Jerry Krause. I don't know that that's a good look, and I don't know that's the kind of thing that's going to cause Packers fans to feel good about Aaron Rodgers. And that leads to the other report today from Mike Garofolo of NFL Media that Favre actually warned prospective free agents, Packers players who were due to become free agents. Aaron Rodgers said that uh, – that He's not going to be there in 2021. So whether it's David Bakhtiari, who stayed, Corey Lindsley, who left, Aaron Jones, who stayed, any of the prospective free agents, Aaron Rodgers was telling them, according to Garofolo, that he's not going to be there. To me, Shereen, that was stunning. Absolutely. You're dismantling your team or trying to, it seems like. Now, they got some of those guys to stay, but we know that money talks and, and the Packers gave them a lot of money to get them to stay. There's no question about that. But yeah, it's stunning that you would tell teammates, hey, I'm not going to be there. This team, basically what you're saying is this team may be in sort of a rebuild mode with a young quarterback who's unproven at this point because I'm the guy to lead you to the Super Bowl and I may not be there and I don't plan on being there. So this was stunning, Mike, no question. Yeah, and look, I, I, I'm i trying to be so objective on this that I'm worried about things that I probably shouldn't worry about. I mean, Packers fans can judge this for themselves. I am not trying to stir the pot here. I always stir the pot generally if stirring the pot is the natural byproduct of being honest about what I see. What I see here, and I think I would believe this for any quarterback under any circumstance, regardless of what he's said about me in the past, regardless of how he feels about me, regardless of how I've criticized him, and I've praised him as a player. Just a few weeks ago, I was saying they should hire him on Jeopardy, that he would be great, and he was great as the host. I'm capable of being objective. And in this specific instance, my objective analysis is, if I'm a Packers fan, I am upset with the knowledge that Aaron Rodgers was actively undermining the best interests of the team. Telling guys don't bother to resign, basically, even though that may have not have been the exact language. Look, what you should do at a minimum is say nothing. Nothing, right? Right. Guys thinking about resigning. Well, you know, I may not be here next year. Don't say anything. Don't say anything. Don't try to sabotage what the team's trying to do and holding other players on the roster. Same thing that I felt about launching this crusade against the Packers on draft day. Distracting the front office, distracting Brian Gutekunst at a time when he should be completely and totally focused, as focused as all of the general managers are, on the three days of the draft. Trade up, trade down. Who do I pick? What do I do? How do we read our board? How do we make these decisions in a compressed time frame? You don't need that crap hovering over your head. So if I'm a Packers fan, I'm getting more and more 
pissed off at Aaron Rodgers, Shereen. Yeah, and I heard last night at the Brewers game there was a smattering of boos when they showed Aaron Rodgers even on the on the video board or something like that. But this is only going to grow for Packers fans, uh, you know. And and I think Aaron Rodgers was very concerned about that. I think he wanted his cake and to eat it too. He he wants to leave. There's no question about that. I, mean, I think we can all agree on that. I think pa- Packers fans can even see that now. Aaron Rodgers wants to leave this team. He doesn't want to be back. But how does he do it gracefully? And I think it's past that point at this point, Mike. I think there's no graceful leaving for Aaron Rodgers. He turned off Packers fans and more and more keeps coming out every single day. And it's probably going to continue to come out. And it just makes Aaron Rodgers look worse and worse and worse as he plans his exit out of Green Bay. And something you pointed out yesterday when he first started this after they lost to the Buccaneers in the NFC Championship, and we all reacted to it when he made the comment suggesting that his own future is uncertain. Two days later, he cleared it all up before it could become a thing. Now it continues to dominate the sport. Now you can't act like, I didn't know this was a big deal. Now, if you want to put, wait for it, the toothpaste back in the toothpaste holder, now is the time. (laughs) Well, it's already too late. It's already too late. That's the thing. Even if he would try now, My understanding is he's told at least one teammate, I don't know what the big deal is. Well, okay, if you don't, there's something wrong with you because it is a big deal. You helped make it a big deal. Your camp helped make it a big deal, and there's been nothing to unmake it a big deal. I mean, the bottom line is he talked to Mike Tirico on Saturday. Wouldn't go on camera. That's fine. That's his prerogative. Boy, he went on camera with Twin Spires but didn't talk about the Packers, but he wouldn't talk on camera with NBC about the Packers, but he said to Tirico on the record, Enough to make Tarico believe and communicate that there's a fissure, there's a chasm between Rodgers and the front office. And he expressed regret, Rodgers did, or disappointment that it came out, but it's out. He didn't say it doesn't exist. He simply expressed regret that it came out. How big of a deal is this, Mike? Well, an MVP has never left the team the year after he won the MVP award and gone on to another team. We've had two retire the year after they won the award, but never a, a, an MVP go to a different team. So that's how big this is. This is huge. And you could squash this if you wanted. If Aaron Rodgers wanted this to end now, he says, hey, I'm happy with the, the Packers. Go on the Pat McAfee show. I'm, I'm happy with the Packers. I'm coming back. I'm going to win another MVP award, try to win the Super Bowl, blah, blah, blah. He hasn't done that. So we, we get where Aaron Rodgers is by his silence. He tells us where he is. And the fact is, he wants out of Green Bay. That much has become painfully obvious to Packers fans as well. Yeah, and uh, with each passing hour, it's becoming harder and harder for him to undo this. And I don't know that he wants to at this point. Again, when you're really smart, you get the benefit of the doubt that everything you've done is calculated and strategic. And uh, if it isn't, then he's not as smart as we all think. Brett Favre was on radio today with Wildey and Tausch, ESPN Radio. Here's Favre talking about a communication that he had with Aaron Rodgers regarding the situation. They were willing to trade me. Uh, it sounds like the Packers now are not willing to trade um, Aaron. You know, it, it's a tug of war. So it's it's similar but, but also very different than my situation. I just sent Aaron a message and said, hey, am I going to see you playing for the Saints this year? Just, just kind of joking. <laughs> uh, and he sent back, hey, buddy, uh, I don't believe that's going to happen. Uh, and, I, and also in that text, I just said, hey, I hope, hope everything's okay. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm getting a lot of messages from people asking me what's the deal. And he said, hey, thanks for checking on me. Uh, I'll touch base with you. Uh, after all this is over. After all this is over, which implies there is something there that needs to be over and will be over eventually. It's not, this is no big deal. It's not, don't believe what you read at profootballtalk.com. Don't waste your time reading that crap. He could have said anything he wanted in response to the Brett Favre text message. And the response was, I'll check in with you when this is all over. Further confirming that there's something there. And I, look, he's not going to play for the Saints because the Packers aren't going to trade him to the Saints. The Saints don't need him. The Saints can't afford him. The Packers don't want him in the conference. That doesn't mean he's not going to be traded. And 
Uh, that's a separate issue altogether. But uh, clearly, as Favre has further confirmed by talking directly to Rogers, there's something there. There is something there, Mike, and, and it's irreparable at this point. And it started back, we all know, with the Jordan Love selection. And I don't think they did a good job of communicating with Aaron Rodgers about what they intended to do, that they were going to trade up, that they were going to draft a quarterback. And they passed on a talented group of receivers by doing that. Now, if you look at their draft this year, they've helped their team. They had a really good draft by all accounts. But Aaron Rodgers may not be there this year to take advantage of the players that the Packers have given them in that draft. It may be Jordan Love's draft to use those players to try to go to a Super Bowl, go win a Super Bowl. So he may leave, leave there with one Super Bowl, and it all started with the drafting of Jordan Love, and it just seemingly, Mike, has gone downhill from there. Rob Demosky of ESPN has reported that the Packers think the 49ers and the Broncos have tampered with Aaron Rodgers. And I would suspect, I don't think Domofsky explained it this way. My guess would be it was solicited tampering by Rogers camp, trying to generate a trade market, getting the word out that there's reason to call. Remember last week when the 49ers made that call Wednesday night, Kyle Shanahan told Rich Eisen earlier this week, he didn't want to wake up Friday morning and find out that Aaron Rodgers had been traded to someone else. He had reason to believe that there was reason to call. And I think that there were communications. And they can't be proven. The Packers aren't going to claim tampering. They're not going to have a smoking gun. GMs, front office executive coaches, they aren't stupid about this. And even when they are, the NFL arbitrarily and selectively enforces the tampering rules. But I suspect that Rodgers people have been making phone calls trying to get certain teams to contact the Packers. And if you do anything other than hang up the phone immediately and report that communication to the Packers, you violated the tampering rules. Well, you go back to 2008, Mike, and the Packers accused the Vikings of the exact same thing with Brett Favre and nothing led to it. So it is selective when the NFL chooses to enforce these. You pointed out the Jeremy Macklin one. Uh, with the Chiefs talking to Macklin when he was still under contract with the Eagles. I think that's probably the last time that any team uh, suffered consequences from tampering with the player. We know it goes on all the time, and it probably did happen in this case, no question. Now, whether it was Rodgers Camp calling these teams or these teams calling Rodgers Camp, however that worked out, I'm sure there was probably some communication. Otherwise, how would the 49ers know to pick up the phone and call on Wednesday night and say, hey, just in case you're considering trading Aaron Rodgers, dot, dot, dot. So I do believe there was some conversation there, Mike. And, you know, even though the Packers may not be able to prove that there was a smoking gun, that there was some sort of communication, there's been enough said publicly by GM John Lynch and by Shanahan. I mentioned the comment that he made to Rich Eisen the other day that would at least make it plausible if the Packers wanted to make tampering charges and have an investigation launched. And that's why it's always smart to say we don't talk about players who are under contract with other teams, period. Then you avoid that problem altogether. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.